All right, part two. Um, the other day when I was at home, I had a guy come knock on my door and he had a petition that he wanted me to sign. Now I understand, I know all of you are, are too young to sign a petition because you're not old enough to vote yet. But I want you to experience this and maybe you can then show this to your parents and see if, if they would like me to um, bring over the guy that has the petition and then you could sign it also. Well, this, this petition, it is uh, it's a coalition to ban dihydrogen monoxide. And it says, ban dihydrogen monoxide, the invisible killer, right? This stuff is, is just, a, a, it does all sorts of things and, and injures all sorts of people, right? And, and I want to read this to you, and I'll read it kind of slowly so that you get it because you you're not be able to see it necessarily. But dihydrogen monoxide, it's actually a colorless, it's odorless, it's tasteless, so you can't taste it, and it kills uncounted thousands of people every year. And most of these deaths of these people it's caused by accidental inhalation of DHMO. What's DHMO? It's dihydrogen monoxide, right? Um, but the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide don't end there. There's actually more to it because prolonged exposure to it in its solid form can actually cause severe tissue damage. You can end up with real problems if you if you touch it even. Uh, symptoms of, <clears throat> excuse me, dihydrogen monoxide ingestion can include excessive sweating, urination, possibly a bloated feeling, you can feel nauseated, you can vomit, <clears throat> you can end up with a body electrolyte imbalance. Excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for those of you, unfortunately, that have become dependent upon this dihydrogen monoxide, um, if you go off of it, it means you will die. I know that's unfortunate. Luckily, in the case of this petition, if you are already dependent upon it, uh, there is an addendum to it that makes it so that you can still get it. But hopefully we can keep People that are not dependent on this keep them from becoming dependent upon it and ending up with these different conditions and even death from, from being exposed to this, this chemical. So hydrogen monoxide is also known as hydric acid. It's actually a major component of acid rain, which we do have around here. If you actually uh, take the pH of our rain, our rain happens to be around a four or five, which is uh, in the acid side of the pH scale. So this is a portion of that acid rain that is causing it to, to be acid. Uh, it contributes to the greenhouse effect, which is causing the raise in the average temperature of the earth, which is causing our crazy weather that we have. Um, it, it's really affecting us significantly. It causes may cause severe burns if you come in contact with it. It can contribute to the erosion of our natural landscape. It accelerates the corrosion and rusting of many metals that, are, that things are made out of. Uh, may cause electrical failures and decreased effective, effectiveness of our car brakes. It's even, unfortunately, it's been found in the excised tumors, the tumors that we've taken out of cancer patients. And we find it inside of those tumors that are cancerous. And that's extremely unfortunate. So somehow we've got to get rid of this. There's this cam contamination is reaching epidemic proportions. We've got to do something about this chemical. Quantities of dihydrogen monoxide have been found in almost every stream, lake, river, and reservoir in, the Amer in America. And the pollution is global. It's actually not even just in America, it's all over the entire world, right? Uh, the contamination has even been found in Antarctic ice. Uh, in the Midwest alone, dihydrogen monoxide has caused millions of dollars in property damage. It's costing us millions of dollars having this chemical. Um, it, it's, what is it used for? So even though it's extremely dangerous, it's still used in our, around us. It's used as an industrial solvent and coolant. So the so factories use this material, this chemical. It's used in nuclear power plants like the one that's down here in Monroe that is still open. It's on your way. If you take the back way, get into Cedar Point, you'll drive by it. Um, it's used in the production of styrofoam, which is a substance that never goes away. It's around for a long, long, long time. It's used as a fire retardant to keep things from burning. It's used in many forms of that unfortunate, cruel, animal research that we use animals in order to uh, test chemicals and test things like this chemical to see what the effects of it are going to be on humans and unfortunately we use it on those animals. Uh, it's used in the distribution of pesticides which kill off in insects. It's even in some of the, and this is probably where some of you are already addicted to this, it's in a lot of our junk food that we eat um, and other food products that we consume. So even after washing produce, and you know how like we wash an apple to get the stuff off the outside, even after you wash it, this stuff will still be on there. It doesn't come off 
by simply washing it. Uh, companies dump waste dihydrogen oxide in rivers and oceans. And you know, there's nothing we can do to stop them from doing it. Um, because that practice of dumping it in the oceans and rivers is still legal. The, wild, the effect on wildlife is extreme and we can't, we can't afford to ignore this any longer. This is just terrible stuff. We've got to stop this. It's horrific in what it's doing to our environment. At the very end of this petition, it talks about the American government has refused to ban the production, distribution, or use of this damaging chemical due to its importance to the economic health of this nation. So we can't get rid of it because it's helping us out financially, even though it's killing people. Uh, in fact, the Navy and other military organizations are conducting experiments with dihydrogen monoxide and designing multi-billion dollar uh, devices to control and utilize it during warfare situations. Hundreds of military research facilities receive tons of it through a highly sophisticated underground distribution network and many store quantities for later use. So I hope after explaining this to you, I hope you consider the idea of signing this petition. Now again, I know those of you that are students, you're too young, but you could show this video to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, look at this chemical. We need to get rid of this chemical. Mom, Dad, we need to call up Mr. Pape and have him bring over the guys so that you can sign the petition and get rid of this chemical because it's so bad for us and it's killing people, all right? So right now I want you to think about that and go, should I sign this petition or shouldn't I? But think about what I've told you, how nasty this stuff is, all right? All right. So that's the petition. That's this petition. Now, what I want to do is I want to back up, all right? And I want to think about this in a different way. So I'm not doing the petition now, all right? Now, I'm Mr. Pape, I'm your science teacher. And I want to look at what this chemical is. So let's back up for a second. Let's use what we know. Well, the name of this chemical is dihydrogen monoxide. Use what we just talked about in class. Well, the first one, hydrogen. So it's H, and how many are there? Well, it's a di, so di means two. What's the second element? The second element, oxygen, and how many are there? It's mono, so it's one. So what were you going to sign a petition to get rid of? H2O. That's water. So I actually tried to present to you a petition to get rid of water. What would happen if we got rid of water? We'd all die, right? Well, why in the world did I do this? Well, I wanted to show you that a reason why we need to understand science and why we have to utilize science in order to um, guide us in our life, right? Because you could have somebody that could come up to your door, knock on your door and present to you a petition and say, I want you to sign this petition. And what I want you to always think about is go, you know what? I need to go out and do some of my own research on this and find out what this stuff is that they want me to sign. Because it might be dihydrogen monoxide. It might be something like Mr. Pate told you in class. And you don't want to sign something that you don't understand. You need to go look at it. Okay? I've even had, when I've done this little, little exercise in class, because I've used this for a long time, it's a real common thing for chemistry teachers to use, I've actually had uh, adults in my classroom that they've come up and told me and they're like, you know what, Mr. Pape, I was going to sign that petition because I'm old enough. And why? Because you're Mr. Pape and I trust you. And it's like, oh, look at that. It's important that just because I look like I'm somebody that you should trust, you need to go out and do some of your own research on things, right? Because the person that's going to come to your door someday to present you with a petition on something is going to be dressed up, going to have a suit on, probably a tie. They're going to present themselves really, really well. And you're going to go, hmm, they look like they probably know what they're talking about. All right. Now, I could go back through this, but what I'm going to tell you is go back and re-watch this video and listen to it. And the interesting piece is, I never lied to you at all. Everything that was on this petition is true, except for one thing. And that is, that is there is no petition to get rid of it. I'll go through the first paragraph to start with anyways, but water... It's not dihydrogen oxide anymore. Now it's water. Water is colorless. It's odorless. You can't smell it. Now you might argue with me and go tasteless and go, no, I can taste water. But if you look at your bottled water, you'll notice on most bottled water, it says minerals, vitamins and minerals added for taste. All right? If you actually take distilled water, which is just H2O, it's all it is. It really has no taste to it. All right? um, and it says it kills and counted thousands of people every year. And most of those deaths 
or by accidental <laughs> inhalation. What's that? Drowning. So people drown by swallowing water. Um, it says prolonged exposure to its solid form causes severe tissue damage. Well, the solid form of water, ice. And if you're exposed to ice too long or snow, you can end up with frostbite. Uh, if you ingest too much of it, you can get excessive sweating. You have to go go to the bathroom a whole bunch. Uh, possibly a bloated feeling, nausea, feeling sick to your stomach. You might vomit. You might end up with a body electrolyte imbalance. There was actually a while back, there was a uh, radio station that had a competition one time where it was whoever could drink this many water bottles and then who could hold it and not go to the bathroom the longest. The lady that won, and she won a video game uh, system, and she held her herself from going to the bathroom for a long period of time. The unfortunate piece is she never got to enjoy the video game because she died. She actually messed up her body electrolytes so badly that they couldn't get it back in the line and she ended up passing away and dying. Okay. So just by simply not going to the bathroom and drinking too much water. And then it does say at the very end of this says if you've been if you are dependent on this, um, withdrawal from it means death because if all of us, if we don't drink water, we will die within three to four days. Because right? you got to drink water in order to, to stay alive. So again, you go through this entire thing, go through the whole video, everything that I told you, it's totally true. All, right? all I did, and sometimes I even played on your emotions to try and get you, like, it's found in the excised tumors of those cancer patients. Which, yep, it is, because what are we mostly made out of? Water. 80% of our body is water. 80% of that tumor is water. Right. So I played on your emotions to try and get you to sign this petition because of playing on the idea of those cancer patients. Right. And the same thing will happen. And again, there's two lessons I wanted to learn on this one. Number one is that the stuff you learn in class is valuable in some way, right? Because someday you might need to identify what a chemical is. The second thing is when you have that person show up at your door holding a petition saying, will you sign this petition? And you know, there's all sorts of people dying because of this petition. I want you to be able to go, you know what? I might sign that maybe, but I want to go out and do some of my own important research right? and find out if this is true, what you're telling me, and what's the other effects that maybe you're not telling me about. right? So, so that's the piece I really want you to know on this, and I think it's a good educational experience to be aware of. Right? All right, with that, now, if you wanted to, you could play the first part of this video for your parents and see if they would sign the video and then show them the second half piece of it and see and explain it to them what I'm showing and the whole idea that, no, it's really just water. So, right, well, y'all have a good day. We'll see you.